Releasing Trauma is sponsored by the Global Association for Trauma Recovery. The Global Association for Trauma Recovery is a social impact organization serving as a resource for survivors and their families dedicated to facilitating change by spreading trauma-related awareness and thus creating a more trauma-informed world. Learn more at gaftr.org. Welcome to Releasing Trauma, a Survivor's Podcast. I am your host, Tracy Osborne. I am a survivor of emotional bullying, rape, sexual assault, domestic abuse, and grief. After losing my husband in 2019, I set off on a new adventure to help other women release their trauma and create a life they can cherish. Each week, I will feature a guest expert or a survivor to share their stories, tips, wisdom, and more. The goal? is so that you can take away even just the smallest nugget of information you can use in your life right now to make a change and to remind you that you're not alone. There is life after trauma and you can move from victim to thriver and create a life you can cherish. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. I am your host, Tracy Osborne. With me today is Anne Donata, and we are going to be talking about um, overcoming childhood trauma. So Anne, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Tracy. It's I'm, my my pleasure. It's my honor to have you here. Um, so, you know, I'd like you to start off, Anne, with telling us a little bit about your story. Well, I think the framework of the story is basically we are eternal beings and we're here on Mother Earth, who in some ways is our permanent mother, to learn lessons and to evolve. Um, However, that requires inner work, inner growth work. And in my case, I happen to, at a soul level, chose to learn my lessons through sexual trauma. And I've often asked why why is sexual trauma the most expensive crime the world over? Why is it a taboo subject? And what is the greatest damage? And the greatest damage of it is not necessarily the event, but the secrecy, the shame, the guilt, um, the... um, well, in my case, I, it started at 18 months when my mum went into hospital and my father had some caretakers and I was sodomized and actually later discovered, which is not in the book, that I attempted suicide. It was so horrifying for my body. And, um, but we're not, we're not really told. Our society doesn't tell us that our greatest gifts come from our trauma. And that's what I ended up discovering. And what took me to deal with my trauma was I was in so much pain. So it's about the story of transformation, because once I got the sexual imprint, which can also come from past life experiences, I then attracted other sexual incidents to come as a form of, I call it, uh, having a PhD in experiential soul work. So, um, and that's how I am now living in um, abundance, uh, freedom, and creativity. Uh, All as a result of my traumas. I'm so happy to see that, um, you know, life today is far different than what life was like for you back then. Um, and that, you know, and I'm so sorry that that is something that you went through. I, I just, no, 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 I would know. say it's a blessing. I, I, and I, I can understand that. I, I understand where that comes from. Yeah. Thank you. Because I, I, it, it's the, what I call the clearing, cleansing and purifying of the uh, second response that the body goes through. Um, in the nervous system that creates our permanent beliefs and habits until we choose to go back and revisit and realize that there's nothing we did wrong. 
it was all for learning experiences. And we are never left alone. We are always supported. Those are, yeah, it's very, um, those are very tough learning experiences. That's for sure. Uh, like you said, the, the most expensive crime there is. Um, you know, so, you know, through your journey, um, you know, I know it about age 16, you were um, orphaned. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, I lost both of my parents, yes. So, you know, what what it was life like, um, you know, in your in your early development, you know, from the teens to your twenties, um, you know, did you did you experience what a lot of us as trauma survivors experience, which is, you know, the depression, the PTSD, the uh, trying to numb the feelings with, um, you know, uh, addictive substances or things like that, or did you find the path to healing quickly? Well, no, um, I started work, um, I just turned 15 and I had a boyfriend with me when my mother died. And so when we broke up, that opened up the old wounds and um, my boss told me I needed to get some help. So I, I started psychiatry at age 16. Um, I, I, I believe it's a little bit like if you're in like a a group trauma like as flooding or to samis or even war you just don't have time or the awareness you're very um i, I want to say left brain focused and you just get through it you don't realize what really is happening your strength is just focused on surviving and so I went into a seven year depression until I met and married my first husband. So it was only years. This trauma work is very difficult to do to deal with for young people because in order to, to, to release the, the energy, one needs to have a, a very strong sense of who they are. Because when you go down into the darkness of the night or in facing your demons, if you don't have a feeling of belonging, of, um, of inner strength, it's very hard to come back up to the top layer, which is the external world we live in. It just so happened I had so many nightmares uh, growing up that I was very familiar with um, living in the subconscious world. And today I now know that we make 36,000 approximately decisions a day. And when you realize that those decisions, 95 to 97% of those decisions come from your subconscious, it begs the question, how much consciously am I really aware? And um, the the other thing is, it's one of the most challenging journeys an individual can make on this life, in this life, but it's also the most rewarding. Uh, when I deal with clients and um, I do retreat works, two-week retreat works, um, I never tell them about the benefits of doing this work because it takes the strength and courage of a lion to go inward and face these demons and, and clear your subconscious. But when you do, you open up the space for your heart to speak and your heart's desires to be manifested and created because you are your own master of your life in my world. Absolutely. And, you know, and, um, I, I like where you say that you don't tell them what the benefits are of the trauma work. And I think, you know, that's that's not something that we can really dictate to people because that's a it's a it's a personal journey and everybody's journey looks different and the results are different absolutely yes so you know um was there any point in time where um you know there was like a divine shift or you know something just kind of said and now is the time to 
change. You know, it's, it's time to stop wallowing in the depression. It's time to, you know, start working on yourself and, um, you know, they, the healing time is now. Um, yes and no. Um, I was fortunate I had some near-death experiences. I had some spiritual experiences. Um, and I was successful in um, one of my early careers. But um, the main thing was I had three young children and um, I actually got divorced with a four-year-old, a two-year-old and a six-month on the breast and being the main breadwinner. Um, but the thing that made me want to do this is I had the awareness that my energy patterns would be imprinted osmosisly on my children. And that was one thing I did not want. I had gone through the trauma of my father committing suicide. And that was the last thing I ever wanted for any of my children to face. So um, I basically um, went to a psychiatrist for a year, got nowhere, and then found some primal therapist and who would not take me until I did a two week intensive silent retreat, which I did. And that's what opened me up. I, I, I finally came to the realization that, wow, um, there was hope. There was hope. And um, my life went well. And so every time my life wasn't on course, I knew I had to go back and do more work. And then I outgrew my therapist and just did my own retreats. Wow. So, um, you know, it's going within and that silence is, is powerful. Um, exactly. You know, when we can silence our minds and our voices, then we can really hear the truth. Except I, I had to do a lot of body work and women today are becoming more aware of the, the pelvic con constrictions mm -hmm. in their physical body. Um, and anybody who has had sexual trauma, um, everything that happens below also happens up in the jaw um, and then it goes right through their central core. Mm -hmm. So in order to do this release, we need every cell has a memory and the physiology of the body is that it blocks the memory of the trauma. So when Jesus said they know not what they do, in my world, that means that they know, do not know what trauma they've been through. And the subconscious will not release any of that until it is totally convinced, 100%, that the individual is choosing to do this work consistently with dedication and determination. And when the time is right, um, it's like a digging in Mother Earth to find her diamonds. You have to dig very deeply, very narrowly, very persistently. And when the time is right, the deepest of your traumas will be revealed. But you have to acquire a lot of tools and a lot of self-trust. And this is the greatest act of love anyone can give themselves because we all have trauma, medium, mild, or uh, uh, large yes yes that is so true I, I there's nobody um nobody that gets through life without some form of trauma um oh I had a question and it just kind of like flittered right out of my head <laughs> what um you know oh I know what it was you know in your experience uh working with people and with your own journeys um you know this is it's not a quick journey. It's not a straight no. path. You know, no. it's not go from point A to point B. Um, is it? Is it your experience that, especially in the beginning, it's best to not attempt to do this alone and to have um, support and, you know, even the professionals to go with you? Absolutely. In fact, you can't do it alone. Um, because you're, we have the opportunity of experiencing negative 
um, energies and positive energies. And a trauma person has to a certain extent has diminished their highest power because when we, we, we have um, two kinds of energies, I call one happiness, joy, bliss, peace. That's kind of expansive energy. We remember them, but there's nothing to cling on to, to hang on to. Whereas in the negative experiences, oh, we can hang on to revenge. We can hang on to hatred. Um, we can hang on to fear. We clench our bodies. We make ourselves tight. And the moment we do that, we close down the space we live in. We close down the ability to breathe, to feel. And to give you some idea, part of my recovery, I was fortunate to find a healer and uh, anyone who's physical abuse. Uh, and I was able to go for a total of five months every week, um, five to six hours of deep tissue massaging. And the guy who did it, he didn't understand the emotional aspect. I had had a lot of experience in that. So while he worked on myself, I was emotionally releasing and we found there was incredible locked in energy in my lower back. So um, physical release is a, an important part of, um, I found my body was one of my greatest teachers. It's amazing um, just what our body holds on to that we're not aware that we're holding on to. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, um, you know, I, I've talked about in previous shows that it, trauma lives in our cells, in oh. our in our fibers. Yeah. And, you know, you, you have to do that body work, the, the breath work, the physical work, the massages, you know, everything to help get rid of that trauma. Well, I was maybe halfway through doing my um, healing work. And I came up, what, why was this happening to me? Um, I wasn't, I think it was coming more from a spiritual point of view. And what I realized was that I was being called to release, call it cleanse, purify every, every cell in my body for humanity. And when I'm working with a client, the human me, the individual me, is really not present. I have to go into the energy world where I am guided. Um, and uh, it is my cellular energy that the client is trusting. It's not me, the human me. Right. And when we get that, that cellular trust, humanity is well on its way to being healed. Uh, you know, so let's let's talk a little bit more about healing, and, and you know, can you talk uh, a little bit about some strategies maybe that our listeners um, uh, can use to you know to facilitate their healing? Okay, well, um, having lost my parents early, I had no no relatives around, no neighbors, no one. I took to journaling. So I think journaling is one of the most important things. Um, you have a way of, of expressing to yourself, even though there's part of you that's not um, listening, at least you're learning to open up and communicate. And maybe one day you might discover your inner child. So journaling is an important part. Um, we're discovering breathing is vital. And mm -hmm. there's so many I put out um, um, par, um, blogs on my website, which is www.andonado.com. Um, there's blogs there, and people can comment and ask questions. I also do a half-hour free consultation um, if people want to contact me via email or telephone. But um, back to... Um, I mean, meditation, I moved from doing therapy retreats into meditative retreats, two week silent meditative retreats with, with teachers. Um, the thing that stops us the most from growing is that 
we are not taught to trust our inner voice. And I think that's where journaling helps. I traveled the world and had a lot of body work. I tried many different um, modalities. Um, I did Gestalt. Um, I did Reiki and got a couple of um, degrees or whatever on Re in Reiki. Um, I did yoga. Um, I can't think of them all now, but one of the things I found that the you have to kind of trust your, your therapist. But then I discovered my greatest teacher was the therapist I couldn't stand because they were mirroring to me parts of me that I didn't want to face, my shadow side, if that helps. So right. uh, it's about trust. It's, and that's the hardest one. You borrow the ability and hear the words from your uh, maybe best friend, in the old days, I think we, they were called best friends. Today, they're called coaches, counselors, therapists. But you borrow their thinking patterns until the day comes when you say, I think I know better than them. I'm going to don't feel what they say is 100%. Then you're more becoming your own master. But in the beginning, you can write it down what, what is hurting. And you begin to learn to ask questions just inwardly ask questions. And I found my questions. I learned how to do dream analysis. I did art therapy. Um, I do mandalas. And I, I opened up my creative side as we empty the spaces out that trauma uh, blocks us with. If that helps at all. That helps a lot. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, and speaking of your creative side, can you tell us a little bit about your book, Twisted Roots? Um, it's basically a bit of a memoir of my history of trauma. I, um, I started it because my children had been experienced some of my energy and I wasn't able to give them unconditional love. Um, I did this work for them. It took me over 20 years to, to decide I was doing it for myself. Um, I didn't have any self-worth at that point. Um, so it was really, I had um, an accumulation of all my um, diaries. And um, I think the greatest thing that my turning point was, I spent approximately 10 years with my uh, best friend who was able to see energy and we worked in a business together and every Saturday night after the business closed, we spent three to four hours. She, I would uh, challenge myself each week to do better um, and raise my vibration. And I discovered I could clear, cleanse and purify um, physical um, building because the energy that runs through um, everything is absolutely the same. I was able to experience the truth of oneness. And um, we watched the development of my light body. And so that's where I got my greatest um, strength from, because it was uncontaminated by man. And um, nobody could deny it inside of me. I couldn't deny it. Um, I had to accept it. I had to to know it was my permanent me. And um, that's where I began to get my greatest power was knowing that my spiritual body was in fact the real me, eternal. That's incredible. I was very fortunate. Yes, definitely, you were. Um, well, Anne, thank you so much for coming on and talking with me today and you know, telling us a little bit about your story and, and just sharing your wisdom with us. I really appreciate it. Well, this is available to everyone. I, I, I promise you that. But I came to it healing through desperation, absolute desperation. And it was years I, I kept relating to people who were desperate. Oh. Until I cleared and cleansed. And uh, I hope people do look and uh, go to my website, my name, andanada.com. And there's another book, a website. It's called The Spirit Dancers. It's my fun website. It has my poems and my artwork. 
and I I urge people to 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 do their own creative work. Just close their eyes, get a large sheet of newsprint, crayons, and work with their non-dominant hand. It's it's amazing what we we really are. It it really is. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you for that, listeners. You know, I will have all of Anne's information down in the show notes. Just go to releasingtraumapodcast.com if you're listening from one of our partner stations and pull up Anne's show and all of her contact information and links and everything will be there for you. Um, Anne, once again, thank you so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you, Tracy. You're doing great work. Thank you. Thank you. And listeners, thank you as always for tuning in and we'll talk to you in the next show.